Ooh, newbie versus Hell Raiders as uh, game don't one. Game one. <laughs> Second to our last series, <laughs> our third series of the day. Game one of newbie versus Hell Raiders. I'm like reading the pips and I'm like, yeah, there's actually no results there. Just such quick games as we move through them. So we just ended yep. our previous game where EG was able to 2 0 over. <laughs> Freaking infamous boys, and now it's Hell Raiders, the underdogs, going against Doobie. Yeah, that's that's our cut. Maybe that's our theme for the day for our stream. Underdogs. This has definitely been an underdog stream, and the underdogs have remained under so far. Yeah. In fact, well under. Well under. Ten yeah. feet under. Quite a quite a lot under. Yeah. yeah. But it's been it's been two sets of infamous. They did not really show up very well today. Let's see if Hellraisers can. They had a very close game against Virtus Pro earlier that they did end up losing, but they were looking very promising in. Uh, now they're facing Newbie, who are currently six and four in the groups. Hellraisers themselves are one and nine, but they just played another six and four team in VP and looked pretty promising. So I have a feeling that this match is going to be a decent amount closer at the very least than the previous one. Yep. Remains to be seen if Hellraisers can take a game. It is important right now to note that Hellraisers have a lot to play for, uh, and so does Newbie. This group is uh, very segmented. There's like, the first place of the group is already set. It's LFY. Yeah. They're 12 and 0 and have just been looking incredible. Yeah. But beyond that, there's three top teams, or four top teams with four losses, one of which is Newbie, who are 6 and 4. And then in the bottom, we have Execration with 3 and 9, Cloud9 with 1 and 9, and Hellraisers with 1 and 9. So every game for these bottom teams is massively important to try not to get yeah. the absolute last slot. In the yeah, game. especially like winning these games. Like everyone's kind of talking about like the Cloud9 versus Hellraisers game. They're going to, the last series that, that the both of these tomorrow. teams play yeah, is, is tomorrow, and it's the third round of games. So more than likely, that will be to see who is eliminated from TI and who remains in it. Uh, and Hellraisers have a harder run they have to really take two games somewhere in their upcoming matches because cloud nine is still playing up against execration and they're still playing up against digital chaos and you give cloud nine the chance to win one or two games out of the out of those series like that's what you're expecting to happen so hellraisers need to keep the score level or else we could just avoid the tiebreaker completely and hellraisers will join fanatic in well the trash heap at the end of the TI group stages. Fnatic still have a chance they, they of not getting last. They the have a chance, but you also see the teams that Fnatic still have to play up against. That's sure. Like they, they're playing up not against... Be easy. It's EG, right? Like EG, IG Vitality, and Secret, and I'm not sure which one of those teams they're currently facing, but uh, they are in a They're facing match. Team Secret right now, I believe, and they've lost game and one. And they're down 1-0, yeah. Yeah. So it's not looking good for Fnatic, for sure. Um, never say never, though. You can always come back. And uh, at, at the very least, you know, it's not out of reach. They need to win two games to potentially be tied for last, and then they would face Infamous. Mm -hmm. um, I could, a, a team like Fnatic can take a game off Secret, or it can take a game off IGV or EG. They just need to, you know, get their get their act together when it really matters. Find, so, find the mojo. Nothing is, is need. decided until it's decided. The only thing in the groups that are decided right now is that LFY are looking boss. That's what I'll tell you. They are really good right now. Going 12 and 0 is one thing, but going 12 and 0 in a group stage against the type of teams they have faced is against the, the last two teams from from the major grand final up against newbie up against IG winners of DAC. I uh, yeah, that the two old VP destroyed them in one of the games. Quick win. Yep. They haven't like as far as I know, LFY haven't been close to losing a game. It's it's not it's one thing that they have went twelve they've gone twelve and zero, but they haven't been close to losing. Uh, there's been other teams that have made like really nice comebacks with it, like behind twenty k gold, and then they just barely itch it out by being that that little bit of class above their opponent. LFY haven't even been in that position as far as I know. So they're, they're, you know. they're, the, they're the dream team, right? You go you go through the qualifiers, you burn your way up, you go through the group stage, topping it out. Yeah. It's the dream. They're quite, they're quite something. But yeah. uh, let's, they let's are get to in this the game. Exactly, they are in the group of these two teams, and these two teams have a lot more to play for right now. So let's have a look. There's yep. the Necrophos pick from Hellraisers following their Sand King Warlock, and Newbie went for their Lich Legion Commander opening. Bans are pretty straightforward. Newbie banning out both the Lycan and the Night Stalker. We've seen the Venomancer Nyx bans pretty, pretty popular heroes. Maybe the Venomancer bans a little bit surprising, but the Nyx is very standard. And then newbie follow through with two bands targeted at 33, the Tide and the Night's Prophet, and Morphling Invoker banned out by Hellraces. So Hellraces have a bit of a healing lineup going here. 
Yeah, a lot, lot of necro. lot of sustain, a lot of team fight controlled as well, uh, which comes in from HR's lineup. Yep. And this may be what they believe they need to do up against Nubia as well. We saw we were talking about like Infamous being pulled, like gravitating in towards this four to five man ball that can just win. Virtus Pro actually did something similar against Hellraiser in that game you're talking about, where it was uh, VP that ended up winning. It was the Warlock that was throwing a big spanner in the works. That drop dropped the rock, Fatal Bonds ties him up, and then the sustain just wasn't good enough to tank through all of that. But on the other side, they all went back up to full health. So I'm interested to see if Hellraiser are trying to take like a lesson from their previous loss and then use it themselves. And Warlock, they're no strangers to it. Earthshaker pick up now from Nubi, and welcome to the king of teamfights, the Earthshaker. Yeah, Nubi's teamfight right now looks very good. They have a clear-cut initiation with Legion, if they want to use Legion that way. It's not necessarily always good to just blink duel someone, but they have the option to do that against a hero like Necro. Yeah. And then their follow-up is very strong. To so. control Necro before he's able to scythe anybody and be that aggressor. And before he can get his second spell off. It's it's a lot of a... Uh, like, this Ghost Shroud versus Legion is very delicate. Like, you need to be fast, but it has no cast point. So if you, mm -hmm. if you see her coming and you're expecting the duel, you can kind of mind game it. Here comes the lone druid. Hellraisers have been playing this previously as well. Now they have. But, hmm. 33 is really good on this hero. Really, really good. On it. Um, could be the approach they're taking here with him on that. It just seems the interesting combination when you pick him up. Like, what is the point of Hellraiser's lineup? Are you looking for that big team fight? Lone Druid could pump out a fair chunk of damage. The roots are nice. Like, it's good for laning phase, at least, into push. So, I suppose if he survives to the team fight, then you get your push after. It's good for but. it's it's good for pushing towers. I think their lineup. You you send the bear in, starts hitting the tower. If the enemy tries to fight into you, you have extremely good counter engage. You have this good sustain for five men. It's almost like this is like some of the closest we've been to a death ball lineup that I've seen in this tournament so far. So in isolation, I think their lineup makes good sense. The we'll see if they commit fully for it with their last pick. But I feel like at this point you almost have to with how you've gone so far. Actually, getting a weaver. If Lincoln can come up in time, then you'd probably be very, very happy. But it's the the fact that if Weaver does get caught by the scythe and is dropped low enough, it's going to be very problematic for Moogie to stay alive. Uh, it's uh, They're mainly picking it as a lane counter, I think. Weaver is good against Lone Druid. He can play the lane and, and do fine. Um, if you're going to do that, do you do the newbie special. Push KP into the safe lane. They push the Weaver that. and Lich as a dual offlane. It depends where they think Lone Druid is going. He's not necessarily going safe lane. He could be going offlane here for 33, for example. Maybe. Or it could be going mid. It's a very flexible hero in terms of laning. The bear is a very unique mechanic in the game, having that summon that's so powerful that you can pull the waves and win a lot of one-on-ones by using that bear. Pug the Pugna ban would have been a very good pick for HR. I like this ban a lot. And the Death Prophet ban is also out. This means that Nubi can still go for the uh, Intel Burst here, as they would probably want to have for the mid, and they're actually going to go for an Ember Spirit. Hmm. So, extra lockdown control, very difficult to just to lock in position. Can dodge Warlock. Warlock Rocks actually be really difficult to get off in these fights. Uh, it's not the easiest Warlock game, this one, for sure. There's two heroes that can catch him in the back line. That's one of the benefits of Weaver as well. can just get in on the Warlock and force him out, so he can't get those big teamfight spells off. Um, we'll see. So Hellraisers, in my book, have two options now. Either they commit to this push style and they get another five-man pushing hero, or they need a solution to Weaver and Ember. Their only stun is Sanking, and that is going to be hard to play. So either I'm guessing the Sanking Warlock will be the support duo, so they can get a core that has a silence or a stun, or they can get a core with this pushing. I think they really wanted that Pugna. That would have been so nice. Let's see where they go. They go Pugna. So there you go. They should control core. Silence and stun for Kaiser in that mid lane. I I like both lineups. I don't think there's like a clear draft winner here. I think Hellraiser's lineup has some clear merit if they execute it correctly. And Newbie's lineup is very, I want to say standard in a way. It's just the classic, you know, we have a couple of strong cores that can scale and do well in lane. Then we have team fighting supports and a bit of an initiation from our off laner. So following the, the standard recipe, if you will, of, of building Dota lineups. Yeah, I, I would be okay with the HR lineup, but at the same time, you have to understand that they're, they're running this tournament's been rough. Newbie are looking a lot better in the competition, and their draft just seems to be very easy to execute more than anything else for their players. Yeah. So 
this is like I, I would lean to newbie. I'm lean definitely newbie. leaning to newbie as well, but it's based on results, not on draft. I, mm. if this was two very evenly matched teams on paper, then I think anything can happen in this game. Can someone uh, get 33 some com cosmetics for his uh, lone droid? <laughs> I think he has some. He's, he's losing out in the particle war here. Yeah. I mean, Laundry doesn't have the most particle heavy sets either, though. Yeah. Oh, he has the golden totem on Kaka. That's nice. It's golden Fisher. <laughs> well, there is these bracelets that just don't seem to match anything, but they're part, they're your mortal, so you get to wear them <laughs> every time. All right, let's have a look. You don't have the battle level things. I think they this, removed that. this game, if it gets close, will be really exciting. It'll be one of the best we've watched if it gets close, because there's so much... There's, first of all, a lot at stake for HR, and their lineup is very unique. And it's a clash of two styles, kind of, the way these teams are going to play. So let's have a look. Player with highest total magic or pure damage done by 10. There's a very high chance. So I think... I, what, yeah, where are you going with this? Heartstopper Aura is negative regen. Right? Does that count as pure damage nowadays? I am it not shouldn't. Certain. I think it's negative region, so I'm not going to take Necro. I honestly don't know if this counts toward this stat. I'm going to assume it doesn't, so total magic damage or pure. Does Caustic count to it as well? Yes, that's magic damage. But I don't think Sanki will be the one. Gonna go. We actually don't have that much time. Okay, we're going to make yeah. a choice here. I'll, I'll just go with Puck, just so to get started. Hi yeah. First triple kill will go the way of Ember. The game will be... Oh, these are some really difficult intervals, actually. I'll do uh, 44 to 60. I think this has the potential to be a really long game. And you get 37 to 44. Highest total magic or pure damage by the end of the game will be by... Hang on, whoops, sorry. Hang on. Magic or pure. I'm thinking it's going to be SC. Yeah, it could be the Ember. Could also be the Puck. I think Puck. It could also, Puck. It could also be the ES. I think Puck. Uh, the advantage Puck has in that kind of uh, consideration is how much, you know, this, when you get the Blink Dagger, you Blink, Silence, Orb out. You do that as Harass, and that all contributes, obviously. KP is fighting a 3-3 currently for the rune. 3-3 did get it, so that's three runes to start here for HR. And, and he's actually pressuring KP really hard now. Yeah, that's a lot of damage yet to take. And, and this... And Millen is uh, pressuring SC. Gets the Burrow Strike off. Faye's still doing the body block, so as far as the creep wave uh, momentum being switched around, it's not going to be that bad. But SC's starting to lane it at 50% HP. Had to burn through one of the shared tangos. This is a good uh, good safe lane matchup for Lone Druid as well in my book. Legion is one of the better melees at dealing with this lane, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the Lone Druid will overtake this, especially when it's this caliber of a player on it. Uh, Lone Druid, again, for me, one of those uh, specialist heroes that this guy is one of the best on this, so you're hopefully going to be seeing that and putting that to use. We'll keep a close eye on it. Moogie's trying to get up in the face of the Necro on the bottom, but it's it's Necro and Warlock. There's so much sustain in this duel off that any kind of harassment with Shikuchi just is not going to achieve anything. So Kaka really importantly gets these uh, these pulls off. And also got to keep in mind too the fact that he's playing this at the moment, the five roll on the bottom. While, while the Lich sits in the middle and uh, babysits the puck, uh, oh. babysits the Ember. I'm sure the Lich will still be the five, but uh, this is oh, yeah. a bit unusual for Kaka at least to lane like this. Nice Fissure is going to try to prevent the pull. I think J4 can actually still get this pull off if he does it toward the end now. As this in, like, is... drag down that direction. Yeah, Weaver is going to try to mess he's, with this. He's trying to cut straight through the tree. Uh, he didn't get it. Um, you get the range creep to, to look that way. <laughs> oh, huh? And then... Sentry on sentry. Yep. That's when uh, Kaka thought there might be an Tango stronger. Here, but at least he clears out for Moogie in the lane. Is he going to stack it a third time? Not for a really moment. Alright, so how's the top lane looking? 6-1 against 6-1. Very, very even. KP uh, has more consumables that flew out to him, or crawled out to him. This lane gets increasingly hard for Legion. Um, when Lone Druid gets level 5, Lone wins this lane, for sure. Yeah. The way Legion is supposed to play this lane is to put as much pressure on the bear as possible and just keep the, the harassment up. You see KP doing a very good job here. He forced the bear to TP to base after being resummoned, so he's been laying into it very hard and is currently doing very well against 3-3. So, in my mind, the, the lane generally goes even until 5 and then lone wins if, if both players are playing the lane very well. You want a lane that's being played well this mid lane. 
Kaiser is 18-8 to the 6-1, of SC. Yeah, wow, he's, yeah. yes, there's a creep wave coming into SC, but that doesn't repair that level of difference. And this is against CS. the Lich lane as well. Yep. So he's getting so much farm with the Sand King's help. There's no threat to the Ember, it's just like... Better CSing, that wave momentum continues to be underneath the tower. Causing problems for SC with last hits. And Faith, he can keep the harassment up. Once he gets a couple of higher levels up in Sacrifice. Then he can spam the Frost Blast a lot easier. But a very slow kill game at the very start. Everything's about lane equilibrium. Yep. So far, pretty pretty even laning. I would say HR with this this beginning, this is what the kind of stuff they were hoping for. All of their cores are having a good time on both sides, but uh, HR's lineup timing-wise just will we'll hit this very nice timing when Lone gets strong where they can start pushing towers. So as long as their lanes are going well, they can execute their game plan a bit later of how they want to do. So what now, our second resummon on the bear? Yeah, as long as it doesn't die. It's very big if KP gets a kill on the bear, but that hasn't happened. He's actually stepped up for the CS. Kaka, really nice control of the Necro. There's three range creeps heating into him. The Fettle Bonds will turn on as a uh, swift ending. Has to try and hide inside that ethereal form, but it won't be enough. In fact, now it's Kaka who's in trouble, and so is Mugi. He's got one charge up his sleeve. Mugi burns the salve himself, and Kaka's going to have to go home. He can't, he can't stay on the lane anymore. Mugi still hits pretty hard. One charge just keep Necro in a safe position. He heals so much when he uses Ghost Shroud in this wand. It's uh, very powerful. So a good exchange overall at bottom. Just uh, putting on the pressure that both sides can for now in these lanes. All right, I'm going to keep a bit of an eye on, on top lane now. Laundry has hit level 5. This is when things get interesting. He's going to start pushing the wave here and pressuring the tower. There is a Sand King rotation coming in. Immediate oh. route onto KP. This yeah, could be first blood. Millen. Millen, KP is going to go back into the tree lines. Now he's going to find him. Hits first, then Barra strikes after. KP, the damage should be enough and will be enough. Kaka taking first blood on the top lane. Actually, it's 33 who gets the kill. Yeah, I would be surprised if Kaka got that kill while being in mid. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> He's helping out the Ember though, it's who's having a hard time. Mellon. Kaiser Kaiser plays a very good Puck. He has a couple of heroes that I would say he is like exceptional on. Puck is one of them. His Queen of Pain is very good. His Shadow Fiend. And uh, so far showing great mechanical prowess here in the mid lane. This is not easy to do when you're playing against this kind of dual lane, but doing a very good job. That's getting his. He's close to level 6 on the Puck. So that will give opportunities for maybe a quick gank onto the Ember until he hits 6. He is currently being outleveled by a full level with a Lich in his lane. And this this is like the worst thing that can happen to him. But at least he can he can play catch up. That's all right. Like SCC is by no means out of this. It's Twenty nine yeah. for four. It's, it's totally respectable. It's just uh yeah they're losing a little bit on the XP. But his gold is good. It's the fact that rotation I believe is going to come from the pocket is going to be a lot more effective. Like, well, we got TP coming in at the moment. He could rotate down to the bottom lane, try and change up this lane and help with the Necro and the Warlock. First, a little other level, would like to have a little bit of space and just push the Weaver back behind the timing of 33 on the Lone Druid. Yep. Who, by the way, will, he will be ramping up heavily now on Lone. Yep. He's got the two levels in Rabbit. He has the level four bear coming up soon. You notice too, like, KP just left. He doesn't want to yeah. be involved in this lane at all. And this is one of the big benefits Safe Lane Lone Druid has, is that he can actually push out the wave fairly quickly and safely, and then he can go and take the jungle camp. A lot of heroes that push out the wave don't necessarily farm the side camp this well, but it's like a zero Defending. commitment thing. He's got the Weaver bug on him. The nice negative armor sure. is really starting to rack up. He, of course, can go inside that Ghost Shroud, try and survive inside of that, but the Fissure block just is perfectly positioned. Uh, there's no way to run out. Even an ethereal being presumably cannot walk through a rock wall. Physics, Dota. <laughs> ah, a nice kill here from uh, from newbie. I feel like it was bound to happen at some point that this necro will get killed by that kind of rotation, but he comes straight back down, continues farming. Uh, the kill goal did go to Mugi, which is nice for newbie getting that bit of bounty on the Weaver. He's gonna all he need to start. Maybe he needs a ring of health here. 
to sustain in this lane over time. And he will be closing in on that if that's what he wants. I'm waiting for this level 6 to arrive on Necro. It's been... Because that's what I'm expecting friends to come and help. Find kills, do something about it. KP's looking to move over and contest 33. Realize that he's not doing anything apart from just picking up a bounty rune. And having his stolen by Millen. Meanwhile, Karka steals HR's. Oh, Kaka's in a really bad spot here. He's gonna die. Uh, Dream Call's gonna hold him there. Turns for the Fissure. Able to connect on two. Takes the stun from the Dream Call. Barra Strike still available. Stick charges up as well, but eh, there's no time. Puck Orb does the work. Ah, gets straight in toward the mid. Very efficient play. Orbing toward through the river to straight get straight back into mid. Probably got him an extra CSO2 here. And will put on the pressure toward the tower. Now, he knows Ember isn't showing in lane, which means one of two things. Either Ember is jungling, or he's looking for a rotation play. But doesn't look like the heroes of HR are scared in this bottom area at all. They're actually posing very aggressively. Yeah, maybe they may be punished for this. Kaka gets the double stun. The Weaver bugs out once more. Only really connects over onto Swift Ending. And Moogie, you can see him running left and right. Uncertain about which is the critical target to go on. Newbie couldn't lock in. Understandable when you don't have that uh, ability just to hold someone permanently in position. That comes from KP when he's ready to move out. Yeah, he's currently doing a pretty good job finding good farm here in the Legion. But as expected, is being outfarmed by this lone druid by a decent amount of CS now. Currently a 15 CS lead for the loan. And the problem for KP is if he leaves this top lane, he loses his tower. That's another benefit of the safe lane laundry. Is the amount of sheer pressure he's putting on the map by just being there is forcing Newbie to be a bit less mobile. If if they port down the Legion, someone else has to be able to go top, but their supports can't stand there. There's very few heroes that can actually go to this lane and stop that push. It'd have to be like, you take the kill and then send Mookie up north. Yes, you could send up the Weaver. That's like the only real play that I see for them. I think Ember can't really realistically defend the tower very easily either. Oh, it was actually Swift Ending who did it by the 10 minute mark. And a tertiary benefit of Lone Druid, taking two bounty runes at once, one with the hero, one with the bear. Straight back to lane, pushing this out. This this is a master of the hero right now. Like His decision making and his movements are very good. It's like reminiscent of a player like Admiral Bulldog on this hero or um, uh, Matumba Man in recent times. Also plays a very, very good safe lane Lone Druid. It's a very mechanical hero. Very refined from him. Yep. SC is going to try and showcase his Ember Spirit skills. Jumping in through the rear, finding J4, hearing the Lich ulti, bouncing around on top of the Necro Foss. As SC and Kaka team up together to bring down the Warlock. The Dream Cult is holding Newbie in position for the moment with the Silence on the Earthshaker. The Scythe doesn't do enough damage to Moogie. In fact, all he's going to do is to time lapse it off and then battle underneath the tower. He'll find that kill. The Fissure clipping the back of the Puck's wings. Three heroes lost from Hellraisers. Moogie was low, but they still couldn't even kill him off. Ran right right out underneath the shrine. And it looked like a bit of miscommunication from them there. Milan had the stun to just go for the kill immediately on, I think it was the Shaker or the Lich, but held his Sand King stun to try to stun other heroes, but the guy he could have just killed actually ended up surviving, so they don't even get that trade-off. And a good move from Newbie gets rewarded. It's one of the benefits of Ember Spirit in this stage of the game. It's very powerful when he hits this level 7 and 8. So using that spike to get something done. And that he did. And better off for them is the fact that KP didn't have to leave the top lane. So he remains sitting yeah. up here farming and rapidly approaching the Blink Dagger. Which means when the rotation does happen, it'll be a lot more efficient. Speaking of that rotation, Moogie is now up on top lane. So yeah, we talked about him KP coming maybe. north, but they're going to work together. Yeah, they're going to start pressuring this tower, and uh, we might see uh, KP moving away from the lane now that they ported up the Weaver. Uh, by the way, a nice snipe on, on the last Fissure from Kaka. There was an Invis Puck that was so close to surviving, but Kaka just clipped him with that Fissure, and that was a very big kill for him, working toward what will now be his Arcane Boots when he can access the shop. Yeah, but 33's now moved to the bottom lane. They want to try and get a trade-off. If, if you're going to lose your top tier one tower, you want to take it in return as the oh, bottom tier one, and uh, there's before. your TP, Kaka. Oh! Rock! He commits it to cancel oh, off canceled. the TP, and then the Scythe will put the ES down. I think Shaker cancelled it himself. I think that Golem actually missed. Did it? It looked like it to me. I may be wrong there, but Kaka may have misclicked there. 
Either way, that's a kill. It's a golem used for support. Not ideal, but they do secure their tower by doing so. And as you said, KP's blink will be coming up shortly. But these these heroes of the Dire are certainly getting very good farm. Both the Puck and Lone are looking okay. dangerous. This will be a very fast Radiance at this rate. He's sitting at 6k net worth at the moment. 13 minutes in. 2.3k, 2.4k in the bank. And hand of Midas off cooldown. <laughs> yeah. Tisk, 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 tisk. Might be waiting to get a big creep here. Gotta be careful about the ganks now, because this is when newbie can turn their attention, right? Like you smoke up with Faith as well as KP back behind the tier 2 tower. The first reveal of the bling dagger. They want the lone druid. They need to delay the Radiance build on the lone druid to get control of this game back. They're, they're still in an okay position. It's by no means an insurmountable lead here that HR have managed to gain. It's 2k gold. It's, it's nice, but... The the timings is the timings are what really matter here. The, the lone radiance is a big timing. If they can delay that, as you said, it's very good. Um, maybe slowing down the puck a bit as well. A kill on him would delay the blink dagger by a couple minutes, perhaps. But it's it's not the easiest place to make, to be honest, for for newbies lineup. This this legion blink has the play pot play potential, but he can't solo kill these heroes. He needs at least one additional hero, maybe even two. She this might have also been flying missing on the top lane. Look at Lone Druid in bear form. He has 2,000 health and 13 armor and a raindrop. That's a hard kill. It's a really hard kill. They need three heroes for that. I don't think any two heroes can do it. Ember plus Legion will not kill this guy. That's why SC as well as Faith is there. Moogie's beating the man tasked with defending the there top tower. There goes the duel. Bottom right. lane. They found the target. Well, they found the SK Spirit Jump in forward. You won't get the bonus damage onto KP. But the dual victory does still go the way of the Legion Commander. Reveals his position, and now HR are finishing up the T1 tower on top. Kaiser with a double damage on Puck. They're actually alone. rotating in. If this Fissure can, can, can connect, then SC's got a chance. Great but ward here. They move back. Keeping them safe. They have that high ground ward HR, so they see the TP coming in and back off. And they forced good rotations. I think that was... Was that two or one TP? Uh, it was two. The Earthshaker and Ashi. I don't Ember, know if SC. Ember definitely TP. Yeah, he has he very did. long cooldown TP in his back. Yeah, they, they both TP. Yeah. So they forced two TPs. Now there's a third TP even coming in from Faith. Okay, Newbie definitely want to fight here. Right, they don't want this tier one town to drop. No Golem. Golem is ready now. Oh, this is not easy. This is definitely not easy as a hold. They need the perfect stun. And it's still catch out Necro. He's got himself that hold of defiance for extra protection. The T1 tower remain alive for the rock. It connects on so many. So is the fatal bonds. Licholdi will start bouncing around the side. Doesn't put down Mugi. Kaka trying to bring in more damage. The duel is out. Victory going the way of KP. And they want another target. It's the Warlock. Press the attack. They don't have the damage. They are attempting it. But Warlock's TP out will be successful. A one for one, one, one. trade-off. You'll deny the tier 1 tower on top, but Lone Druid's got space for HR, more importantly. He's gonna have a 17 minute Radiance. That is so fast in this patch. That is really, really fast. And yeah, the top tower, like you said, is deniable. It's a one for one trade where Lich and Warlock die and Golem is used, but... And they win a duel. So it's it's something for Newbie, but I don't actually think that was that, was that, that good for them. They needed more than that one kill um, to make that rotation really, really worth it. Now, Moogie finds Kaiser and Milan. Uh, as long as they can hold him there, he can't blink away. Milan oh, misses the stun. Yeah, tries to create some space, goes inside the sandstorm. Kaka. The Veil of Discord got planted on top of the Earthshaker. He's got Fissure of Verbal able to clip the SK. Meaning Moogie can put the final attack in. But again, all this is happening. Yeah, you're finding more and more, 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 and more pickoffs, but 33 is just becoming more and more of a beast. The advantage for Nubia is the fact that Moogie is the one finding him. Now 303 on this Weaver. The damage output from him, even if you do find your Radiance, I'm wondering if, if the trade-off is actually better in favor of Nubia, just because Moogie can get rid of this bear quickly at the moment. It's gonna be a while before this Weaver is gonna kill the bear. Now that it has Radiance, the missed chance. The bear is innately extremely tanky at this stage of the game. Uh, of course, later on, when Weaver gets farmed, it's uh, one of the better heroes at killing off the bear. But for now, this, it's just not happening. Oh, Kaka's super dead. Yep. Veil of Discord, all but out, and then fatally bonded towards the creeps. He does have his one charge of farm, they burn the Dream Call. He thinks he may as well let the Fidget go. Doesn't get the right timing, however. Oh, close to Necroalty, but didn't get it off. Oh, my Kaiser. Ah, Moogie. <laughs> he needed the Fisher to actually hit. SC is trying to do something about this bear on bottom. Savage Roar and Bear does something about SC. 
There goes the tower deny. Held it as long as they could. Now they know that HR are coming, so they deny it. Very curious to see how HR go about this with their lone droid. If they just want to start deathballing down this this uh, top lane now for the tier 2, using the Radiance immediately. Uh, this can backfire quite hard if they're not in good position with all of their heroes, but the smoke from the side with Warlock and with the Puck. Warlock very close to Golem again. 10 seconds. Will make for a very difficult fight for Newbie here. Oh, Faith. Smoke's going to break over on Puck, so... Probably thinking someone's up the up the ramp. Have the heal for the bear as well. Warlock heal is very powerful on level four. Macmillan's position. It's close enough in the trees that he can bar a strike out with the epicenter if Newbie decided to try and fight just the north of their tier two. Oh, he doesn't have blink yet, actually. No, he doesn't. He's still short. And That's he... that that kill in the jungle delayed him. Yeah, he needs to get his blink. And this is a good hold from Newbie. They just HR got scared that that wasn't going to work out, and they backed off. Uh, Weaver has found the Warlock. Oh, not going to commit. He's going to run into Lone, actually, but... Yeah, okay. Not too much going to come out of that. He's still got time limps available. I don't think uh, HR have enough control over him just yet. And note to the fact that Weaver is going to go for the Fusal Blade build. And then Ring of Health is just the casual regeneration for the moment, but Lincoln's makes a lot of sense in this game, too. To make it very difficult for HR to get a proper lockdown. Yeah, being able to dodge Scythe or the same oh, thing found really good. 33, Big kill if they get it. Do they have enough? The Lich Halty, the bear works against 33! They didn't actually kill off the bear, I think. It actually killed the hero first, but Kaiser jumps in and all three TP. Oh! Oh, two of them actually out of three. Get cancelled. KP won't go down to the Scythe, but it's enough to hold him. Get wow. the kill and Faith will fall as well. If that golem would have hit the third hero, that was so beautiful. But I I think that's actually worth it for, for Newbie. Losing these two heroes to force a golem and kill the lone. So what, what 33 was trying to do there when he resummoned the bear was he saw the shaker coming in and he wanted to resummon the bear into straight roar. But the shaker was very quick on his stun. So the bear got stuck together with him and then the chain frost killed him off. If he doesn't move in his resummon his bear in the beginning, he might actually be able to survive there by just waiting a little bit longer, pull in the bear and then roar when Shaker stuns have been used. Because then the chain frost can't connect. So yeah. Kind of an instinct play right there that turned against him because of the chain. Very nice chain frost coming out from Faith and the setup was beautiful from Yubi. This now puts game. money into the hands of uh, of the supports. Karka just got his blink dagger with this. So blink echo slams can become more and more of a problem. You do have your blink dagger on to Millen, so both sides actually getting their blink stun initiations available. And another big item is the Necrophos getting the Pipe of Insights. It's a superb item against the Radiant lineup at this stage in the game. They have so much magic damage and so little physical. Ember's magic. Legion is largely oh, magic they damage. They found the real right lone now, druid. Spear is forward. Look for the Searing Chains. KP, he wants to blink forward. Thanks to the Savage Roar and the Radiance, he couldn't blink it further. And the Burrows Drive from Melon! Perfect on top of KP! The Fatal Bond has connected them together once more. SC, Spirit and Jump further and further away. This is not the fight they were looking for. The Lich died so quickly. Melon, a level 4 Burrow Strike just short of, of SC. Tarka has to blink out too. As Tower's gone. Yep. One fight. A very good one. First reveal of both blink daggers. And it pays off for HR a hell of a lot more. They could probably get Roshan very soon. I mean, this, is, this is what's so dangerous when you're playing against this type of lineup. HR with an Aegis might just be able to go for a pretty early high ground play before these scaling heroes of newbies start coming truly online. Weaver is not dealing that high damage just yet. This Diffusal Blade's going to help a lot, but would like to see a secondary damage item on him before he starts really laying into this bear. Mainly getting the Diffusal, of course, for the Necrophos. Being able to now remove that Ghost Shroud will be very useful. Uh, in addition to just in general being a good item on Weaver. Uh, what are we looking at apart from that? Ember working toward Radiance. That will take SCC quite a while. And in that in that period of time, his hero's not that strong. It's is Radiance really where you want to go with this? It's It can work if they delay it long enough, but it is, it is a pretty high investment build on Ember. They need time. And the gank will help with that one. They move closer towards Roshan. No one's ganking that up. At, uh, no one's killing that at the moment. They will definitely think about it. Warlock just completed a Medallion of Courage. They might just kill this bear. And they just got a double damage rune as well into the hands of Puck. I say bear, what bear? <laughs> oh. Now, now so recall back, back over. Middle. They're moving down into the Radiant Jungle now. Push the mid lane. It's a tier 2 tower to take. J4's only got sentries with him at the moment. 
They've already got their aggressive ward back behind the tier two, knowing no one's defending this. And Look at this two. bear go to work with Mask of Madness just destroying the tower. That's even without Battle Cry. Yeah, that's so such an incredible siege engine. This is the second time now where Moogie has tried to chip away and take this tier two tower on top after HR attacked another side and the scythe. Well, they've got him silenced for the moment, waiting for him to come back outside of Shikuchi. Time lapse is out the damage. The other side of the fissure wall of Kaka. The tower will still go the way of Mugi, and Kaka, blink away to safety, has his TP scroll available as well. But HR, they, under the cover of smoke, slip into Roshan. And they see the... I don't know if they see the blink or oh, not. Oh, this is a really bold play from them. Oh, SK's gonna go visible right on top of the Observer Ward. They're gonna know where Millen is. Necro's KP, there. if he wants to, he can just jump up. So Necro can go down. There's your duel on top of the SK, keeping him out of the fight. SC will lend a little bit of extra damage, and the winner is there for KP. Mugi wants more. He gets the bugs on the top of J4. Kaka in, but the rock, plus the Fatal Bonds. It connects four of them. The Lich Only will bounce out again as it go back up. It does into the bear, into 33, and the Warlock Golem. Nubi have just tried to disengage, but as Kaza, who's getting himself defusal down by Mugi Kaka, cannot get the sound at the right time. A quick blink from Puck will get him away, but a fantastic fight for Nubi. There's a couple of really important things that happen in succession there. First of all, the failed kill on Weaver top led to all of this happening. The, the reaction of Mugi there was incredible. He reacted to a blink silence from Puck out of the fog and got it off at the right time, so he was able to reset his position. And then afterwards, Necro gets caught in his own jungle, gets killed off. And that just led to this beautiful play out from Newbie. If we try and disengage, Melon Burrow strikes forward, finds KP. He's got a couple of stick charges, plus press the attack, and Melon very, very visible. Mugi will take his life and then run away from the bear. They are burning defusal charges left, right, and center. Like burning it so the bear can't even chase him. Uh, this is newbie out. They outclassed HR in this last, these last few minutes. Just flat out, better movement. Especially this kill, this whole sequence in the top area of the dire jungle was really, really big for them. Now HR might try to go for Roshan here if they feel, if they feel confident. This is not an easy move though. Here comes the scarabs. They get rid of the observer wall, which is nice them. The observer and sentry of their own now on the hillside. But look at the attack that Nubi has taken. They're coming from above, a place where HR have not established any vision. And thanks to the Scarab Beetles, yeah, as you said, they know exactly what HR is up to. The the warding from HR is also very good here. They have this uh they have these three wards covering around the mid and top area to give them information to prepare for this Roshan. It's not a likely successful likely to be successful play right now. They will be needing a smoke. Gank probably to set this up. Well, they look very much grouped for it, but yep. uh, that requires a smoke. It's coming on the Courier now with the Rod of Atos of Swift Ending. Yep. And he's going for a Ghost Scepter next. I actually really like this. He will he'll be forcing out... Oh, Kaiser got killed by Weaver and Kaka without using Echo Slam. Just a Fissure off from the side into Enchant. Set that up. So the... Um it's like he self yules as well as trying to escape. Yeah, he just got defusal, I guess, immediately yeah. after. So th this Necro Ghost Scepter will be nice because he will force defusal with either the Ghost Scepter or Ghost Shroud, and then he can pop the other one after. And there will not be a secondary defusal built by this Radiant lineup. KP's running north. Oh, that will be Shadow such Blade. a big kill. Start with the Echo Slam, press the attack into the duel lone. Druid's going to fall down. 65 seconds, buyback is available. But Hell raises. it was a couple of minutes ago, they wanted to take Roshan, and now they're just trying to stay alive. Newbie are all over him. Yeah. That's just a uh, bad positioning from the Lone Druid. He's, he's in this top lane all alone. The dire, the Radiant lineup has just taken the tower up there and have been playing aggressively in the area. So if he moves up there alone like this, he will be caught. Has to either send out the bear with Radiance and just try to push the wave that way or be somewhere else. This, this area is not theirs. They do not own their own jungle at the moment at all. Yeah. And Karka's continuously looking for kills. Glimmer case himself forward. Just got the plus 50 talent as well. Fissure to start with. Then actually goes for a secondary totem before he goes for the hit. That damage may have been enough to kill off the puck. Instead, they'll do it the slightly harder way. But it gets Mugi the kill, and that's his money for a BKB. Bypassing the Lincoln Sphere and just going directly into the BKB. And now this Radiance is done on Ember. All of a sudden. Sequence of events gave him so much space. SCCC. Gonna go pick it up. 
head straight back down afterwards. And Yubi's lineup is really starting to come together. There was this scary phase when HR's lineup was really good, but these couple of moves that Newbie have made have had a great impact on their road to winning this game. Yeah, you can see it in the graph. Just the last five to ten minutes, everything goes the way of Newbie, and they're looking for more. Side of Fist Searing, Chains doesn't probably connect on the SK. Kaka blinks up a little bit out of position. SC has a remnant available, but cannot control the SK long enough. So SK's able to blink away. So defending Ori. Each time he's got to trigger that Ghost Shroud, you could feel the fear. Oh, yes, Ghost Scepter is available soon. And, and this is HR looking for a fight. They have everything ready. They just want to find some sort of opening here onto anyone, but this Weaver will be a really difficult kill now with that Black King bar. Legion might be a little bit easier here. He is close enough. Yep. And Radiant scan out. They stand Standing a little bit further pit. to the south, wait inside Roshan, Smoke's gonna break. The bear will check Roshan and wonder what the hell's going on, but it's the Observer Ward that saw the bear coming for a bit of a peek. Really, really great play. Even if, really even if they play. did Go look ahead. in, you've still got the Shadow Blade on, on KP. He just, he read the situation so well there, he's like, they're probably smoked. So I'm gonna stand in the Roche Pit that they might be their objective, then I'm gonna use my defensive ward around the area to see them when the smoke breaks, and instantly get out. And that was enough to scare HR off, so... Defended themselves perfectly against that smoke play. And nothing will be found for HR. They're gonna smoke so themselves now. Might go. Yep, exactly. They got everybody but SC. SC's got a job to do, aka bait. Oh, he has double damage as well. His attacks are actually very strong now with double damage and radiance. They need to be careful. They find a target. Swift ending gonna be in the tree. Smoke's gonna break on the top and the bottom of him, so you knew exactly where he was. The duel is out. He couldn't get his shroud up in time. And Moogie will take yet again another kill, a 9-0-4 Weaver. This really is a godlike streak from him. It seemed only a couple of moments ago he finished up his BKB, and now he's almost got the money. In fact, he's got the money to buy up the entire Desolator. Oh, almost. He bad. Yay. Meanwhile, uh, 33 is changing his item build. Trying to get BKB. Lone drew it back and add a lot of pressure. Newbie trying to be quick about this Roshan. KP's the man in, in the job of the defense. Overwhelming odds does a decent amount. They'll take a little bit of chip damage to the tier 3 tower. And the TP's coming back over. It's like Puck wants to try and contest this. The fidget came down from Kaka. If Puck actually went in. Oh, the Dream Coil! It'll cancel the TP. Your Scepter's on the lid, trying to hold them here. Mookie may just oblige. There's no Your Scepter to be defensive anymore. Puck has Phase Shift available, has to actually hide himself. Let the Spirit jump forward, and Kaka will reach him with a Fissure. If you want to play, it looks like Nubi is very willing to play. Yeah, he was just trying his best to buy as much time as possible from this split push from Lone Droid, but they weren't confident down there that they could get away with it. The Legion Commander was too big of a threat in addition to just one or two extra TPs back, that could have been very bad for HR. So they back out, minimize their casualties, only losing the puck. The problem is, I don't see them really finding an opportunity to hit the base again for quite a while. This Ember will split push, the Weaver will split push, his Aegis available for the newbie lineup as well. And this Weaver will be playing so aggressively now, coming in with that death so soon. Doing a... Just shy of, okay, maybe not just shy, actually. Hitting about 200. Yeah, before death. Yeah. He's gonna hit for 250 plus minus armor. That's a lot. He can, like, three shot the Warlock. No. See ya, man. Paul Warlock. The ones that can hunt the back line. That's what you're talking about with the newbie draft. Moogie can desecrate the back line. And the tier 2 tower as well. The last remaining out of Tower of Hellraiser's base. And SC, he's looking for someone, just in case someone's thinking about defending this. The rest of Hellraisers are up on top, waiting for the counter pusher to arrive. And SC will be exactly that. Jumps up, grabs the bounty rune. He has a remnant available on the bottom lane, so he can come back to it, but... Actually, he goes back and Kaka. Glimmer Cape. Walk in through the top. Doesn't find the target he's looking for, but knows the Lone Druid somewhere there, and he found him. The Fisher cancelling the TP. The Lich ulti. The bear has to move away, and he knows it as well, but the Lich ulti keeps bouncing back in. And Kaka has the damage required to get the kill. 
I think actually with that Echo Slam, he just took number one position. Yeah, he did. High, highest total magical or pure damage now currently belongs to Kaka. That's really surprising. He, oh, he, mid lane, Epi. Um, did not find the Ember. <laughs> okay. He was trying to. Look he, for the puck instead. SC gets a side of Fist Searing Chains. And just by turning on the Veil, the burn from the Chains is enough to get the kill. Ah, this game belongs to Newbie now. They're in complete control. Yep. Gonna start... Hitting the high ground here, two deaths, no buyback on Lone Druid for 30 seconds. And they can just keep this control factor going too. Can't jump in, you're battling against the Radiance, HR can't get their physical attacks off, a lot of it is in, is in bonus damage from their burst. But they need to bring him down first before you can get any kind of real work out from the Necro. The Rock, this will do the work, but then again, maybe it won't. The duel is already won, now a swift ending who has the most amount of damage. Oh, he's got it back. But say goodbye to the mid racks, and you may as well say goodbye at the top. Three heroes down, Swift Ending will not be alive for another 35 seconds. No buyback is available for him. He's short by 927 gold. You got bugs on Bear and 33. Lich ulti doesn't get his bounce, even though Millen did Barra strike himself in. It's a good coil catching four. At least keeps Newbie in position for a moment. But Mookie is doing so much work. He's by himself inside the HR base while everyone else is holding the Dream Call hands. And GG is the call, and rightly so. 34 minutes in, Hellraisers will admit the defeat to Nubi in Game 1 of this series. They showed a lot of promise, though. I think the, their first 15 minutes in this game were actually pretty good, but at the end of the day, Nubi is the superior team here. They find the correct moves in the mid-game uh, ju and just have this really good read on what opportunities they could could take and what what time their lineup was able to fight the HR lineup. They avoided the critical fights that were difficult, they delayed as much as they could, and then they let the heroes that had the opportunity just take over and find these key picks, especially the Lone Druid kills, very important. And they managed to get the puck under control as well, who had a great early game. So, great game from Newbie. See if they can keep it up in game number two. Yeah, and we'll be back for that in just a bit.